Welcome everyone. It's great to see you here for this social evening tonight. You're here with Rob and Jacob. Uh, I'm in the shack of laughs over in, um, well, not quite sunny Leicestershire at the moment. It's pitch black outside, sat here in my garden. And Jacob, where are you today? I'm in a very cold South Wales today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're, we're used to doing this in the sunshine in the middle of the day, but it's great to have all of you with us here tonight. So um, some of you joined us yesterday. We had our Freshers event where we had some discussions with uh, a few tutors and some people from the help and support teams. If you weren't with us yesterday, check out the videos. Lots of advice for new students. It was all about helping you to settle in and make you feel a little more comfortable as your study start. But tonight's not about that. Tonight's a bit more fun. Tonight we want to get to know you a little more and you can get to know a bit about us. So this is our shack of laughs. We're going to be having some quizzes. We're going to be asking you to share your stories. And we've got some um, some amazing team members looking after you in the chat box. So we've got Kat and Raphael, and they will be there talking with you, answering your questions, and basically having a good time. What we want to see is if you can make them laugh. Can you make them giggle? Uh, we want to really get to a sense of community tonight, a sense of fun. So we're very happy to take any questions you've got, but this is definitely not an evening to sit back and just watch. We want you to be involved, we want you to be engaged. So the way you can do that, we're going to have some widgets on the screens. So these will be some questions that you can answer, some um, polls that you can take part in. And you've also got the, uh, the chat pod, and in the chat pod, you can talk to Kat and Raphael and to Jacob about anything you like tonight. This is, we haven't got an agenda in terms of trying to get you to know anything in particular. We've managed to secure some prizes as well. So we will be giving out three prizes at the end. There'll be a prize for the best story or anecdote that you can come up with. So have a think while we're going through the first, uh, first part of this. Have you got a really juicy story that you're happy to share with us? Um, of course, we want it to be true, but actually, if it's not quite true, that's okay as well. Um, so we're gonna, definitely going to be giving a prize out for the best story or anecdote. And we're also looking for the thing that makes us laugh the most. Okay, so share what you want to share in the chat and tell us your stories. And you'll hear a bit about us today. Uh, I, I noticed a few of you are uh, having a smile about my no dad. Now, I had to explain to um, to Jacob what a no dad was because he's, he's not a man of a certain age like me. Uh, if, you've, uh, if you are in your 50s like me, you will remember John Virgo and he used to refer to the, uh, the waistcoat as the, the no dad. So that's what that is. But uh, yeah, we, we will be having a poll later to see whether it reappears in future ones. So the idea tonight, very simply, we've got a few rounds of quizzes that we're going to go through. And um, as I say, we've called it the Shack of Laughs, Student Hub Live laugh of, uh, Shack of Laughs. And we're going to be going through different rounds and different questions. So we're going to kick us off with one to start with. Oh, actually, no, I'm being very rude, Jacob. I haven't invited you to tell us who's out there. Look at me. I'm straight off. I want to get started on the quiz. Jacob. I know. We're just so we pumped got? for it. We're jumping right in there. <laughs> it, it's the coffee. I've been sat here drinking coffee and, that, and that's it. And I'm on my spinny chair. Uh, so, no. you, you tell I haven't us who heard we've your got, coffee Jake. machine stop going. I'm a bit concerned about this caffeine intake here. <laughs> Especially this, this is it. It takes oh, us so word. long to get ready. So, Jacob, who have we got and where are they from? Well, we've got Jenny from South Yorkshire. Apparently, the weather's not too great there as well, as uh, a trampoline went for a walk last night. I was wondering <laughs> where that free trampoline came from this morning. Uh, Jordan's <laughs> joining us from Hertz. Uh, Richard is new here. Fantastic soon. 
Richard and everyone else new here as well. We know you'll have a lot of good fun tonight. Uh, Joanne's new as well and wishes everyone best in their, their studies. Heidi's from Plymouth. I can't imagine the weather being too great down there either, but do let me know. Um, now, James has a great method for predicting what the weather's going to be, which, to be honest, I'm always sceptical of these weather reports. Apparently, just look out the window and uh, there you are. There's your mm -hmm. weather. I like that one. I've never trusted <laughs> weather people. I think it is a bit of a bit of a maybe wizardy type thing. It's not something that's normal, is it? <laughs> uh, <Lisa laughs> Absolutely. Is for the quiz. Now, Jennifer, like me, isn't very good at quizzes. That's okay. We can work together on this one. <laughs> I'm sure we'll do well together. Um, Natalie does say Kat's, uh, cat looks very angry in that picture. And James reckoned <laughs> that... Uh, <laughs> Cat's, uh, cat is uh, Grumpy Cat's long lost cousin, which to be honest, I'm not disagreeing there. Um, we have got. Which is uh, the Grumpy the Cat? The one at the top or the one at the bottom? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh. pretend we didn't hear that. <laughs> I don't think Cat can hear me, so I'll get away with that one. <laughs> gerard has got uh, some red velvet cake at hand, which is fantastic. And David, I don't know why this sounds really good, but I don't know what it is. Uh, apparently, he has um, Scottish snowball cake, which uh, yeah, that sounds. I want to know I don't more. Know what it is? Well, right. speaking Tell of snowballs, snowball I don't. <laughs> I don't know about anyone else, but I've still got loads of Christmas snacks left over. So I've still got my loads of Christmas biscuits that I'll be tucking into <laughs> alongside our quiz today. But you don't get a manly is... physique like this um, having Christmas <laughs> snacks left over. We've got That's it. I'll get, get past <laughs> first week of jam. <laughs> I promise Sorry. I'll get there eventually. <laughs> but in the chat, if you haven't introduced yourself already, do so. Join in. You can join in with the widgets in the chat. Let us know your thoughts. And as well, we've been saying if we can make um, Pat and Rafa laugh, uh, we mm. may have some prizes as well. I know we've got some Amazon, Amazon vouchers and some a Student Hub Live goodie bags to go as well. So maybe we'll by the end of the night, we'll uh, decide who can be awarded those. But uh, yeah, we're all pumped in the chat and ready for some fun. Absolutely. And we'll be announcing the prizes at the end. So that's, that's an incentive to stay right to the end to see who's going to get which prizes. So thank you for that. I definitely want to know more about that snowball cake. So have a think about the, the Amazon vouchers are going to the best anecdotal story. So a little bit longer than just a comment, so make something a little longer, and we'll judge those as we go through. Okay, so if we can go over to the start of the quiz, and guess what, they've given me control of a computer. Normally, I'm sat here with my hands tied behind my back and I have to do as I'm told but they've actually given me the opportunity today to control the computer, so anything could happen. So let's get started. Oh, hey, that first one works. So the first quiz we're going to go to is Where's Bobby? Okay. Not to be confused by any children's book, uh, with any children's book of a similar name, even though I did sort of look at the logo to see what one or a good one looks like. So we'll start off and for this one, we want you to enter your answers into the word cloud. So the, we, the word cloud will come up and you have to enter three answers. So I'm going to ask you three questions. And in each box, you put the, the name of the city. Okay. So there'll be three boxes. There'll be three cities you have to identify. And then once you put those in, we'll see how many of you uh, get it right. Uh, because it's a word cloud, you need to write it the same way. So a capital letter at the start of the name and try and spell it correctly. So let's have a go. So which city is this? So you'll notice I'm in front of a famous landmark and you can't see much of it. So where is that one? So in the word cloud, uh, write your thoughts on that city, first of all. Okay. So now we're going to go on to the second one. So this is the second city. So which city is this? So in the second box on the word cloud, write which city you think this is. So remember, you need to give me a capital letter to start 
and good luck spelling it correctly. I think we're, we, we'll be looking out for some really interesting spellings of this one, I think, Jacob. And then the third one in this row, here we are, that's me in a third city. Yes, I really do travel everywhere around the world with my OU graduation robes on. Um, so you, there's nothing like it when you're going uh, city hopping. So this one, you write the name of the city in the third box on the widget. So the first city was in the first box, the second city in the second box, third city in the third box, then press enter. Okay, so we'll give you a few seconds and then we'll go and have a look and see what sort of results we're getting. So uh, uh, once, I, once I know that the word cloud is visible, uh, we'll have a look. So, oh, go through them again. Okay, so here they are again. So that's the first one. That's the second one. And that's the third one. So we will see if the widget has worked. If not, <laughs> then hopefully we'll see some of the things that have been entered. So what sort of results are we getting, Jacob? What, what are people saying for the first one? Well, James thinks uh, he's got the middle one for sure, but first and last a bit stumped. A few of us oh, are thinking right. maybe we're not that well travelled, but uh, yeah. we'll see. I think uh, <laughs> Lisa agrees that it's very uh, tough, and Swayze, like me, is a bit bad at places. I just I'm terrible at these types of things, but you know I'll always give it a crack. But on a brighter note, other than my being terrible at these type of things, we know what snowball cake is. So oh, right. snowball cake is a cake covered with coconut flakes and filled with jam, which just sounds amazing. I absolutely love coconut. So uh, maybe David can send us some coconut cake or oh, a good recipe. I like a good coconut cake. Mm. Oh, some people are thinking <laughs> I've really travelled well. So, okay, so let's have a look at the first one. Um, so, Jacob, do you know where this is? Oh, there we go. There's, there's the uh, the word cloud. We can have a look at this and see what we've got. So I haven't got my glasses on, so I'll have to lean right over. So we've got the first one. So we've got London, Cardiff, Manchester, Salzburg. Okay, I think, yes. So the ones that we've got coming up quite large are London, New York. Everything else is fairly small. Aberystwyth. So somebody suggested Aberystwyth. Right, so let's have a look at how close you were. So there are no prizes for this because we can't actually see who's voted, but it's just for a bit of fun. So the first one, as you could see, Big Ben. So there we've got my hometown of Birmingham. Uh, well, so London. So London's <laughs> the first one. <laughs> uh, so the second one, and we definitely saw this in the list. That's the bird's nest, the Olympic Stadium in Beijing. And the third one, and I definitely saw this in there. That's the Chrysler Building in New York City. So give yourself a clap if you got those. So interestingly, I thought those were the easy ones. So no, let's go for the more difficult ones and see how we get on. So same again, this is a different word cloud. So the same rules apply. We are going to ask you to put the first city in, or the first town in this case, um, the first town in the first box, you can enter up to three words. So none of the answers are more than three words long. So in the first box, this is actually a two word answer, I'll give you a clue. Well-traveled graduation robe. Okay, so let's have a look at the second one. 
So where's that one? It was like something growing out of the back of my head. So where was it when this was taken? Okay, and the third one in this section, a bit of a clue there. What's, what's going on behind my ear? Where was this one taken? So what are you like at traveling, Jacob? Where have you been recently? Where have you been out exploring? Oh, um, my most recent ones, I went to Croatia and then Ooh. I visited some family in Ireland as well. So very good mm. trips, lovely countries, definitely recommend. <laughs> oh. But uh, we seem to uh, have a great story. Well, not for Rach, but... Uh, Anyway, it's a story. <laughs> Rach got stuck in a lift in a hotel in London last week for 40 minutes. And apparently it was oh. tiny as well. I had to call an engineer out, but the uh, hotel staff managed to get her out. Oh, my word. I can't imagine that. That is that is a bit of a crazy story there. Um, Alex went to London for Wembley, and I approved with that. Ended up in the chocolate shop, walked out with... Uh, one and a half kilograms of chocolate. So I didn't know you could buy them in such quantities. So I'm quite intrigued by that, actually. And Ooh, was uh, that Melissa the... oh, we can't in... advertise. <laughs> Sorry, no, I was about to ask Me a question, Melissa but I realised it was uh... about a specific one. <laughs> <laughs> Melissa has noticed that uh, you may be able to see the name above your head in one of these pictures. <laughs> yes, it could well do. Um, <laughs> so let's show you the pictures again just while you're entering the, the images I'll just run through them one more time so that's the first one I'll give you a clue it's by the sea uh, <laughs> that's the second one and that's the third one um, and of course while you're writing in, tell us about some of the fascinating places you've been. Uh, I'm really, uh, I've never actually been to Ireland for anything other than work. You know, I've never had the opportunity to really go around and uh, explore Ireland, which is a real shame. So I think that's definitely on my to-do list. I've been there working a few times, but you only get to see the conference centre and the, uh, <laughs> the airport, which is a real shame. Um, mm. Right, I think we've got some answers in. So let's have a look at some of the answers you've put in. You think I'm a lot more exotic than I actually am. So we've got, there's a, a few Land's Ends that are there, which is fantastic. Cairo, I think somebody saw a pyramid on there. Uh, but yeah, and we've got a Las Vegas and we've got a Blackpool. So I think not too bad. Not too bad. So I think two of those answers is uh, definitely correct. One we'll see in a second. So if we can have the slides up again, I'll show you the answers. So here we are, the most southerly point of uh, England, Land's End. So they have the little signpost there pointing out in different directions. Uh, when we went on this particular trip, my, my little dog stood on a wasp. And um, poor thing, she was okay, but her foot was sore, so she was limping around. And we've got a lovely picture of her sitting very proudly in our beach bag with a little head sticking up because we had to carry her all the way around that day. Um, she was perfectly okay, but she loves going in the bag now. Uh, Second one, absolutely, the Blackpool Tower. Nobody was fooled. I was hoping I might get a few of you thinking this was Paris. Uh, and the third one, yeah, a few, quite a few of you were going down the Egypt route, but actually, no, it's Las Vegas. So I fooled you on that one. You managed to, uh, managed to come up with a few thinking it was Egypt. Excellent. So... The last round then, just the last few that we've got. Um, I think we've got th uh, two or three more. So again, the answer to this one, you put in the first box. The answer to the second one, you put in the second box. And I'm not sure if there are three on this one or two. So let's have a look. 
So where's that one taken? Again, I managed to iron those robes really well after I got them out of the plane. And actually, this is the last one, which means in the third box, just put a space or a random word. Let's see if we can find some interesting random words, because that really annoys the team that are looking after the word cloud, because they'll just get lots of little random words. <laughs> I've been told not to do that, but so, that's <laughs> I'm going to be put on mute now and kicked out. You watch. Um, so let's go back through them again. This is the first one. If you're not quite sure, you want to look over my right shoulder or next to my right shoulder, that's where the real clue is. So that's the first one. I'll be impressed if many of you get the second one. Depends how far travelled you are. So have a think about that one. And remember, just put some a space or a random word in for the third one. You have to put three guesses in, but there are only two answers. So, Jacob, did you have you been to that last place? Do you know? <laughs> well, don't say I have. Too, have I... you been there? Ah. <laughs> yes, I remember years and years ago. I was doing a project, and we did a little video around it, which may still be floating around there on YouTube. Ah. Of a much younger Jacob with probably much longer <laughs> hair as well. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a clue. A younger Jacob has mm. been there. And it's an internet <laughs> sensation when he was younger. That's how I started my path to stardom. <laughs> oh, oh, I just noticed people are sharing their favourite cakes. We've started something off here with the old snowball cake. So, yeah, mm. if, you, if you like a particular cake. Well, mm. pineapple drizzle cake cakes. is my favourite. Oh, sorry, carry on. Oh, I like, a, I like a lemon drizzle cake. Mm. Any citrusy flavours, mm, perfect. But I think I'm going to have a chat with Edward at some point because Edward says, I'm an amateur baker and I've pretty much baked everything. I love making roulades, uh, meringues and bread. However, this is the part that I like the sound of. <laughs> Every Christmas, I make all the you log amongst other things. I have to have a second person with me when it comes to rolling the Swiss roll part. <laughs> and... Um, yeah. Excellent. Uh, apparently, it can go wrong making these uh, <laughs> Swiss rolls, but uh, yeah, maybe I can order one. <laughs> well, I, I mean, don't if you mind. need a second person to help, it sounds big. <laughs> I'm, I'm always open to have failures. Send them through. So let's have a quick look at the word cloud then, uh, word cloud, and see what we've got. So Sydney, that's coming through nice and big. Yes. Uh, Milton Keynes, Walton, ah, oh, you, you've got it. I bet there were a couple of people fell in my cunning trap and said the White House. So let's have a quick look at the pictures. So here's the first one. Absolutely, Sydney Harbour Bridge and the Opera House. And for those who perhaps haven't been there, this is Walton Hall. So this is the manor house that is at the centre of the campus for the Open University. So if ever you get the opportunity to go to the campus, there it is, right in the middle of all the academic buildings next to the hub, uh, and it's lovely. Um, and if you get the chance to actually get a tour around it, it's fantastic. So thank you for that. I hope you enjoyed that, uh, that first round. What we're going to do now is we're going to take a slight breath, and you're going to get the opportunity to answer the next question, which is who in the team so there'll be a multiple choice come up on the screen and it's got four pictures there's a picture of jacob picture of me picture of cat and picture of rafa and the first question is who in our team was in a rock band and played on stage and toured with the arctic monkeys so what you need to do is just pick your chosen um, member of the team so it's definitely true for one of us and we're going to watch a short video and then we're going to come back and tell you the answer 60 second adventures in thought number six schrodinger's cat erwin schrodinger was a physicist a theoretical biologist and probably more of a dog person 
In the 1920s, scientists discovered quantum mechanics, which said that some particles are so tiny you can't even measure them without changing them. But the theory only worked if, before you measure them, the particle is in a superposition of every possible state all at the same time. To tackle that, Schrödinger imagined a cat in a box, with a radioactive particle and a Geiger counter attached to a vial of poison. If the particle decays, it triggers the Geiger counter, releases the poison and bye-bye tittles. But if the particle is in two states, both decayed and not decayed, the cat is also in two states, both dead and not dead, until someone looks in the box. In practice, it's impossible to put a cat into a superposition. You'd have the animal rights lobby up in arms. But you can isolate atoms, and they do seem to be in two states at once. Quantum mechanics challenges our whole perception of reality, so maybe it's understandable that Schrödinger himself decided he didn't like it, and was sorry he ever started on about cats. Welcome back. Hopefully you enjoyed that video. Uh, we love these 60 second adventures in thought. They're available on our open learn platform. So there are quite a few of them. Um, so definitely go and check them out. So Jacob, we've got some votes in and let's see which of, uh, which of us do they think is a rock star. So Wow, everybody, well, not everybody, but more than half of the audience has gone for Rafa. So, Raphael, apparently you look like a rock star. Um, I'm quite pleased, Jacob. I, apparently, I look a bit more like a rock star than you, so I'm all right with that. <laughs> I should have thought about my outfit a bit more. Maybe maybe next time I can outdo you on the waistcoat. We'll see, though. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. But I so, well, yep. Swayze reckons it's both cat and the cat. So, uh, <laughs> oh, cat. I don't know how Ooh, that would work. I like work. that. Mm. <laughs> cat and Figaro. <laughs> cat and Figaro. Okay. Actually, that sounds like a band name in itself, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. It does indeed. So, actually, we'll tell you the answer now. Um, the I'm just going to get the screen up. There we go. So the answer to the Arctic monkey one is actually cat. So this is the um, newspaper page. Uh, the Arctic monkeys uh, very early on, a new band from Sheffield uh, supported by local bands. And here she is, here's our cat in the rock band. And this was, I think, you can correct me if I'm wrong in the chat, cat. This was you performing at the Open University with your band before you came to study here, if that's, uh, if I remember that correctly. So fantastic. So cat was the first correct answer. So before we go back to the quiz, Jacob, have we got any good stories, any other stories that we've heard? So we're, we, we're after this candidate for the um, the Amazon vouchers. So well, what's your I top one so far? I think we have a good candidate. We got a go bit on, of then. a laugh out of uh, Raphael and Kat. So Rebecca says, I made my dog a special doggy cupcake once, my, uh, once and my dad ate it. After, when I realised he tried the normal ones, and he says the dog's ones was better. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <dear. laughs> oh. you, you don't want so, people saying that about your cooking. <laughs> we, we definitely want the Swiss roll end and the Yule log, not the doggy cupcakes. We definitely want to go there. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but apparently they so, were still good, according to Rebecca's dad. So, <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I can understand it. We used to make um, treats for our dogs so, uh, and we used to use one of those healthy grills and you put small pieces of beef on there and you let them dry out very slowly over about eight or nine hours. And we gave some to my sister-in-law for, for her dog and her dad ate them all. He loved the dry oh, beef God. treats. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there I we can go. see where it goes. Hmm. But Edward also tells us that uh, he's got a dog cake cookbook, which I think is brilliant because, you know, dogs mm -hmm. are the best, aren't they? They deserve it. <laughs> if we could have cake, why can't they? 
<laughs> right, we're going to move on to our next quiz now then. Let's see how you get on with this one, guys. In this quiz, we're going to ask you to put the answers in the chat box. So that's because the answers are a little bit uh, longer. And this one is called Level 1 Module Synonyms. And what, what we've done here, honestly, I've not gone and pinched this format from any BBC Two show that's on at six o'clock at all. Um, but what we're going to do is I'm going to describe some level one modules. Again, we're going to do them in groups of three and we're going to see your answers come up in the chat box. So we're going to describe the courses um, using names that mean the same but aren't the same. And these are our faculties, Arts and Social Sciences, STEM, Wells, the Business School and the Law School. So let's start with the first one. So there is a level one Arts and Social Sciences module and the name of it means the same as Inventive Scribbling. Okay, so if you write this down, write down number one in front of it, that will help because it'll be the first answer. So one and then your answer in the chat pod. And it's a level one arts and social sciences module. And the name is the same as inventive scribbling. It'll all make sense in a second. The second one, another arts and social sciences um, module checking out a friendly planet so the name of the module means the same as those words but they're not those words you might even be studying this so some of those of you who are just starting on your new module you might be studying this one so put a two in front of it when you answer that one and the third one put a three in front of it this is one of our business school modules and um I work in the business school, so this is one of ours. This is one that in the faculty I work in. One and one's dosh. So there's a, a level one business school module that means the same as one and one's dosh. So that's number three. Okay. So did you know those, Jacob, were those um, ones that you recognised? Maybe you've studied some of them. <laughs> I, I'm not sure I've studied them, but it depends what they actually are. I think the second and third one were a bit challenging for me. First one, <laughs> I was quite pleased with myself getting that one, but uh, a lot of us did as well, which is absolutely great. It means uh, that we're good at synonyms. Gerard uh, just prefers synonym roles. So, uh, <laughs> oh, very good. <laughs> but uh, like Carol, that. Swayze, Bianca, Edward, Susie, James, Alex, Jay, Heidi, Melissa, Zoe, you've all got uh, creative writing as well. So, there seems to be a trend on that one. Okay. So, should we have a look at the other two again just to um, remind you what they are? So, this, these, the, the second one I think is quite hard. The third one's my favourite <clears throat> because I, I, I felt so smug when I came up with it. I really did. So checking out <laughs> a friendly planet. Okay. Checking out a friendly planet. Uh, it'll make more sense in the next round. And the last one. I thought this, this is one I was very smug with. One and one's dosh. One and one's dosh. Okay. You will notice there's a certain amount of colloquialisms coming in here. A bit of, bit of brummy <laughs> slang is going to make its way into the answers, but that's perfectly okay. Right, so let's see how we've got. So the first one, I think everybody's got the first one. So the first one, inventive scribbling, absolutely creative writing. <laughs> nice, simple one. Did we get any good ones for the second one, Jacob, or don't worry if we haven't? So we're thinking it's we're thinking it's a geography one. That's what James reckons. Um, mm -hmm. I know uh, we're thinking maybe search for hospitable planets. Edward <laughs> reckons leaving Gallifrey. Um, oh, absolutely! And David, yeah. David says planet Earth. Susie says discovering Earth. 
Nearly. Um, nearly. Yeah. Where are we with that? All board, right. We reckon. Let's show them then. We want to know. We want to know. Investigating the social world. <laughs> that was a really hard one. It was a hard one. <laughs> You've got to throw a yeah. stinker in. These are university students. We expect them to be able to do this sort of thing. So what <laughs> about the last work, one yeah. then? What about the last one? The well, last one's a really popular one in the business school. Carol reckons me and my money. Uh, Beverly oh, reckons me and my money as well. James, yours and my money. Jay, me and my uh, money. Uh, Edward, <laughs> you and your money. It seems to be a lot of these variations. <laughs> oh. Okay, so let's have a look. And actually, so that was, so the one and one's dosh, very close. It was you and your money. So This is one I'm slightly <laughs> ashamed I didn't get because I actually did this module. <laughs> <Excellent>. oh. <laughs> Although it Although I'm not good at synonyms, I did very well at that module, and it's a very fun module. I enjoy doing it. So. <laughs> right. we, we will just do the, the next three then very quickly. Um, so the first one is finding sums. That's a little easier. Finding sums. So again, that's number one for this, this part. So number one, finding sums. What's the level one? science technology engineering and mathematics course that means the same as finding sums so have a think about it oh the next one i <laughs> quite again some some of these i really laughed when i came up with them and again quite proud of this one as well the queen's tongue or probably more accurately now the king's tongue applied to swatty reasons the Queen's tongue applied to swatty reasons. So have a think about what, what could be another term for the Queen's tongue and what are swatty reasons? I'm glad it wasn't autocorrected to spotty. At least it kept it as swatty. I've had some real games with uh, autocorrection recently. Most people think my name's Ron because that's what my Apple iPhone normally thinks I am. It's Ron. But uh, <laughs> this wasn't autocorrected. Okay, so let me just... Ooh. The next one is rules for the wrongdoer and the houses of judgment. So this is a law school level one module. And I'm hoping some of you might be taking these so... Um, it may, may jog your memory. So rules for the wrongdoer and the houses of judgment. Okay, so how are we doing with answers, Jacob? Are we getting some answers in? We got lots of answers in. Uh, Carol, <laughs> Heidi and Jennifer reckons it's investigating maths. James mm -hmm. uh, says discovering maths. Um, yeah. Edward says discovering mathematics, MU123. Uh, Melissa says, MU123, discovering maths. <laughs> People are I talking about uh, you know and everything. I think they a bit more than we do here. Yeah, <laughs> I love this. We always say, oh, what module are you doing? It's always these codes, isn't it? It's when you're like Absolutely. in the student community, you just know what they are, don't you? Oh, maybe that's what I should do next time. I should put the module code in with the wrong name. Mm. Ah, You've given me an idea for idea. the next time That'd you do this. Challenge. I think that's a good <laughs> idea. So let's have a look then. So finding sums, discovering mathematics. So well done, whoever came up with that one. Fantastic. The Queen's Tongue. Did we get an answer for this one, Jacob? The Queen's Tongue applied to swatty reasons. Um, Edward reckons uh, Royal Speech York Notes. <laughs> uh, James <laughs> says English for academic purposes. So does Carol as well. Oh, you see, we've got some swats out there. So if we could move that over, absolutely. 
English for academic purposes. I thought I was quite proud of that one. Um, and then this is the third one. But apparently there's a lot of chicken chat going on in the chat box. What's that? What's this about the chickens? Yeah, apparently <laughs> we've had... Um, a, a, Dawn didn't realise one of the chickens was hiding in the house. I just had to put a chicken to bed. <laughs> oh, <Absolutely>. dear. <laughs> There you go. Well, to be fair, we talk about different study buddy buddies a lot. So I can see a chicken chilling out with you while you're studying. That's something that I can see. Absolutely. <laughs> Especially if you get a bit peckish. Oh, eggs. Eggs. <laughs> yeah. so just make sure I make that clear. <laughs> uh, yeah, if you want an egg while you're studying. So, um, so what do we uh, what do we mean by this one then? The rules for the wrongdoer and houses of judgment. So, Jay's thinking, law and the law courts. Zoe reckons law court. Gerald reckons criminal law. James, laws for the criminal and the law courts. <laughs> law and courts, <laughs> law and order. Well, we definitely think law's in there somewhere. I think law's in there somewhere. So, absolutely. So, you, nobody's got it exactly right, but you can, you're not far off. It's criminal law and the courts. So, Brilliant. So thank you for, I hope you enjoyed that, that bit of a quiz. That was a bit of fun. And uh, thank you for giving me a new way of doing it because now I can put the module codes in. That's going to be a really good help. We're going to go into our next video in a second. And we want you to answer the next one of our um, who in the team. So the next question is going to come up. And this one, is about which of the team kicked over the manger and made baby Jesus fall off the stage at the nativity. So which one of us looks like that we, uh, we would actually go and kick over the manger at the nativity? So you can vote on that while we um, watch the next video and make sure you grab yourself a drink. Uh, I've been provided with little square biscuits to eat as well. So I'm going to eat these while we watch the video and you should do the same. And this one is the theory of the Big Bang in 60 seconds. I'll see you in just a minute. Sixty Second Adventures in Astronomy. Number one, the Big Bang. Just how big was the Big Bang? The idea that the universe is expanding as the result of a single explosion wasn't always universally popular. In fact, the term Big Bang was coined in 1949 by astronomer Fred Hoyle as a way of sarcastically dismissing it. But thanks to Edwin Hubble, we now know our observable universe is expanding. And extrapolating backwards, we can tell that 13.7 billion years ago, it was all compacted into one super-dense ball. And this singularity expanded and cooled to become everything in the universe that we see around us. So though the Big Bang involved everything in existence, its beginnings were really quite small. And after measuring the background radiation in the universe, astronomers have worked out that the Big Bang was only around 120 decibels, about the volume of an average rock concert. So while the Big Bang still has a lot to teach us about the universe, we do know, at least to start with, it wasn't particularly big. And it wasn't much of a bang either. Okay, so hopefully you enjoyed learning all about the Big Bang. So, back to the question. Which one of our team did you decide looks like they were capable of committing this heinous crime of kicking the manger and making baby Jesus fall off the stage? So, let's see who you voted for. Oh, Apparently, Jacob, it's you. You look like the criminal type. <laughs> um, Everyone so... thinks I've got this dark side to me. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And you're, you guys are going to be amazed. We haven't got a picture of this, unfortunately. But she did say she'd dress up in the angel costume again if we needed the picture. It's actually Cat. So what happened was... When Cat was seven, oh, we have got the picture. When Cat was seven, 
she was the tallest in her class and was given the role of Mary in the nativity. But she didn't want to be Mary, she wanted to be an angel. So she kicked the manger and the little doll rolled off the stage and as a punishment, she was downgraded to an angel, which was what she wanted in the first time. So there's probably a lesson in there somewhere, but whether it's a lesson we want to teach our kids, I don't know. But thank you for that. So the <laughs> cat, you obviously look like an angel. Nobody believed it was you. So thank you for that. We're going to go on to the next quiz. Oh, actually, I keep moving on to quizzes. Jacob, have any, any other comments popped up before we go on? Well, we've got a bit of a story from Chloe, who had an interview mm -hmm. a few weeks back via Zoom. Apparently the time was brought forward a bit and uh, her toddler was in the bath at the time and she was doing her interview and then suddenly heard in the background, oh, mum, I've done a poo. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently the interviewer <laughs> did hear and uh, <laughs> Chloe was just so embarrassed. But alongside all that embarrassment, she did move on to the next stage. So I suppose that's something. But I'm sure that interviewer ha is going to keep that as a story to tell for some time. Yes. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a good one. We like that story. Yeah. Oh, dear. So any others before I go into the emoji quiz? Well, we do know Edward was once in Red White Riding Hood and uh, mm -hmm. had the choice to play a grandmother or a tree, but Edward picked the tree because apparently the tree had more lines and a song. I wouldn't have expected that. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> not not in the version of Red Riding Hood I've, I've seen, but that obviously... No, I, I don't wrong. remember that particularly. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So the emoji quiz then. So this, this is me playing again. Um, we were looking at uh, programs that the Open University has worked on. So you've probably noticed uh, a lot of TV programs are made in association with the Open University and our logo pops up at the end. So what I've done is I've tried to um, depict some of these programs in picture format. So we're just going to do three of these. We're just going to use three and we're going to uh, use the word cloud again. It's working quite well at the moment. And oh, sorry, no, in the chat pod, not the word cloud. So back in the chat pod, beg your pardon. Somebody's busily trying to put chat pods up, uh, the word clouds up and it's not that. Um, in the chat pod, try and work out which TV program, they're all BBC TV programs, that are co-produced or the Open University supplies technical advice on. So here we go, we're just gonna do three of these. So what's this first one? Write your answer in the chat box. So what's that first program? Hopefully you'll get a sense of it. Okay. I'm going to move on a few. That's, that should be some of these are quite easy, so hopefully we'll get them a little quicker. So that's number one. So the second one, put a two in front of this one. What's your answer for this one? A TV program that the OU has collaborated on. We've given the technical expertise. So we don't just work with students. We do a lot of work with um, different. Uh, bodies, different research organisations. So, which programme's this one? So that's number two. And finally, number three. Which one's that? Okay, so once you've got your answers in the pod, we'll, uh, we'll have a look and see who's got the best one. So, Jacob, we getting any answers in there yet? There seems to be consensus in the chat, which uh, always mm -hmm. shows we're on the right track. And it helps me out as well, because I don't have to think too hard about it. <laughs> so, uh, Claire, Melissa, Andrea, James, Zoe, Jay, Heidi, Swayze, Edward, uh, Susie, reckon the first one is going to be Springwatch. 
much. <laughs> okay. I didn't make that one too difficult. Okay. Any thoughts on the second one? So it seems that we're all maybe on a good track with this one as well. Uh, Carol, mm. Jay, Melissa, Claire, David, Gerard, Joanne, Edward, Rebecca, Melissa. We reckon it's Blue Planet. <laughs> See, I think we've got the level now. Students TV, job done. Absolutely, it's Blue Planet. And uh, yes, correct. And what about the third one? We seem to have some differences with this third one. So yeah. uh, Heidi, Claire, Melissa, Swayze reckon it's casualty. Uh, Richard mm -hmm. thinks City Hospital. Um, Nagema uh, thinks NHS. Jay thinks 24 hours in A&E. So does uh, Safina. Um, and Jennifer reckons it's Doc Martin. Oh, right. OK. So, no, simple one for that. It's just simply hospital. Oh, <laughs> just the one that's word. That's kind of deceptive, having the three pictures there. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, we did those quite great. Let's have another very quick round, because this is my favourite one's this next one. So let's see if anybody can figure out this one. So again, back in the chat box, we've got one, two, and three. So this is number one. What program is that? Now, this is really hard. This is the one I wanted to get to. This is really hard. So we've got a tick, we've got a microscope, we've got some DNA, a fingerprint, and a police badge. So which program is that? That's more difficult to identify, I think, that one. And then the third one, number three, which one's this? Piles of cash, but what's it pointing at? I, I had to smile today because I went into my module um, website and there was a big advert for this program on there reminding people that it was on today. So <laughs> it made me smile because I knew we were talking about it tonight. But what's this one? Let's have a look at some of the answers then. So, Jacob, what have we got for this first one? So, Claire, Heidi, Melissa, Susie, Zoe, uh, Carol reckon it's Frozen Planet. Edward reckons it's Frozen Planet 2. Ah, you see, Edward, you're there. It's Frozen Planet. It's the second one that we're pointing at. So, yeah. You like to th I like to throw these confusing ones in when we can. Perfect. <laughs> now, this really difficult one, did anybody come up with an answer to this? So we've got a few different ones. It is a challenge. Yeah. So Gerard and Jay reckon it's CSI. Carol says forensic detectives. Melissa says Sherlock Holmes. Alex says silent witness. David says forensic detectives. Um, Claire reckons criminal minds. So we are a bit split on this one. I'm not sure oh. I can get it. No, well, they're all academic programs. They're all in. Um, they're all informative programs. It's actually the real CSI. That's what the ticks for the approved. <laughs> so, and this final one. Did anybody get this one? So we're reckoning either the money program says Carol and Richard. Uh, Edward says money, money, money. Uh, James <laughs> says on the money. Um, and Jordan reckons million pound drop. Oh, okay. Well, no, none of those is even close. Uh, what you have to notice is that there's three piles of money, but one is larger than the other, and it's a colour. It's the big green money show. <laughs> Excellent. It's all in the detail, isn't it? <laughs> right. We're going to have our last video now and our last um, uh, who do you think um, quiz it is. So this, um, just before we run the last video, 
the question that's going to be coming up for you to vote on is one of our team has been on stage at the Birmingham Philharmonic, um, uh, sorry, the Birmingham Symphony Hall with Ronan Keating. Which one of us is that? So you need to vote. So one of us has been on stage, Birmingham Symphony, Symphony Hall with Ronan Keating. And you can think about that while you watch a much younger Jacob back in his early student hub live days. So see you in a couple of minutes. And remember, grab your tea, eat your biscuits. I mean, as usual, we were having such a massive discussion about this last night, and I, I think that we're probably going to have another massive discussion oh, on good. the Student Hub Live team tonight, and that certainly raised an awful lot of questions. Um, oh. You two. Uh, sorry, it's, we're having a... <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Paul, you can't take them anywhere. They're ridiculous. <laughs> right, um, anyway. <laughs> Oh dear me. So Jacob, definitely more unruly on the hair there. And have you still got the lightsaber? <laughs> it, it's sitting there right behind me, ready to go. So if I'm ever <laughs> challenged, Rob. <laughs> We've got to figure out how to do a remote saber fight. There must be a way to do it. Definitely. Um, <laughs> so hopefully we've got some votes. So which of us have you voted as being the person on stage with Ronan Keating? Oh, we've got a we've got a draw. So either me or Rafa. See, they don't expect you to be on stage with Ronan Keating there, Jacob. But Kat, now they know that Kat is such a um <laughs> Uh, so so much into her rock and roll, maybe it's cat. Well, the answer, and if we can get the screen back up for the answers, um, the answer is actually, it's me, but I wasn't singing. I was actually on stage at the graduation uh, last May, um, my wife was really impressed because it was our 35th wedding anniversary. And I says, oh, I'm going to my student's graduation. And, oh, and Ronan Keating's there. Um, but Ronan Keating was receiving uh, an honorary doctorate for all of his work on cancer research uh, in Ireland. So, And it was lovely. The nicest bloke ever. The, the longest graduation I've been to because all of the graduates... <laughs> Stopped to have a selfie taken with Ronan Keating as they came across the stage. <laughs> it was lovely. Um, but yes, so that, that's me on stage with Ronan Keating, Birmingham Symphony Hall. And yes, I was still wearing my bobby dress. Um, so enjoying <laughs> that. OK, so that's it for the quizzes for now. So, Jacob, any more stories that we've got to share? <laughs> just a few. So, Jordan was uh, just out shopping, as you are and uh, dropped a bottle of pop on the floor while waiting at the till. And apparently there's loads of people on the till. And this bottle of pop is just exploding everywhere, <laughs> spinning around. And Jordan dives on this bottle of pop to save everyone else in the store, <laughs> which actually sounds quite heroic. But I can imagine the chaos going on there. <laughs> oh, if oh, only there'd been a mobile phone there. That's what we needed. We needed that on camera. <laughs> I'll take one I for know, the team. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Very heroic, though. I like that. Um, James uh, remembers his first nativity, was uh, playing one of the shepherds and had a simple tea towel on the head, as you do. I remember those days. Uh, yes. Apparently, James got a massive fright and actually spent the rest of the time sitting on the edge of the stage, just staring out. <laughs> oh, dear. But a few years later, like later James was back at it and uh, actually was doing a solo musical number so uh, got over that stage fright pretty well <laughs> so we just need now we need Kat and um, Rafa to come up with their um, their chosen winners and uh, and you as well Jacob I'll give you a couple of seconds to to chat just while I remind everybody that Student Hub Live we are across the whole university uh, we're a number of tutors and supporters and we come together to help you 
develop your study skills. We talk about generic study skills and generic issues. Um, most weeks there is an event going on with Student Hub Live and you're very welcome to come and join us. You'll find all the information on the Student Hub Live uh, website and we like to have a good chat. It's meant to be fun and the, the chat is as mad as it is today and that's what we encourage. We like you to get involved, like you to feel part of something that uh, is more than just being separated and studying on your own. Study can sometimes feel a little lonely. So come and join the gang, come and talk with us. And um, yeah, we, we definitely like to chat about a whole range of different things. But we also like to give you some good hints and tips as well. So look out for some of the events coming up and you just need to sign up and uh, come and join us when the events are on. So, Jacob, where are we with the winners? Well, I've heard Kat and Rafa have chosen their winner. So we might right. uh, have a little drum roll in the chat for them to announce the winner to us. But while they're announcing uh, their winner, um, I actually really like this story from, Ri from uh, Richard. Um, Richard said earlier, my granddad worked for Cadbury in the 1920s with a horse-drawn narrowboat, and I used to write for Canal and Riverboat magazine. I like that one because it made me thought about my family as well, and uh, I was <laughs> wondered maybe uh, they were in touch with Richard because uh, some of my family worked around the Cadbury factory as well. So I really like Richard's story, and I think, uh, yeah, giving me some... A moment to think as well. So, uh, yeah, Richard, I, I think Richard deserves a Student Hub Live goodie bag for sharing that with us. And uh, Richard's been Excellent. great at contributing and has done well on the quiz as well. <laughs> OK, so thank you. So Richard's one winner. Um, the the winner of the Amazon voucher for the best story, it, it's Rebecca. And the dog cu the cupcake story for the dogs made us smile. We like that. Uh, the next one is Chloe, because we really liked the the teams meeting and the poo in the bath. Um, <laughs> I think that was a shoe in really. I mean, th that was always going to be there. And then finally, we've got, uh, is that Lise? And the cat squared comment for cat's photo. So there we are. Um, and... I've probably put Rafa in trouble now because I bet he had three prizes and we've announced four winners. So there you go. Just to cause a bit of grief <laughs> at the end. <laughs> so he's got to go out and find As we do. an extra prize now. <laughs> oh, actually, they've put a fifth one in. So this, this is down to you, Raphael. Uh, James's ship story is a fifth prize winner. So thank you, everyone. Um, we've had a great night tonight. I can't believe the hour's gone already. I've got loads more questions to go on, um, loads of things to talk about, but we've run out of time. But it also means I've got loads of questions if we want to do this again. So we've got a feedback form for you to fill in. Let us know what you thought. Is, is this sort of madness what you like to come and join in with? Do you want a few more of these? Um, we love doing them. So if you want a few more socials, let us know and uh, the sort of thing you want. Um, and also, comment on the, does the uh, waistcoat come out again? The feedback form is really important because we need to be able to say, yes, students want this. And the more you tell us what you want, the more we can come back and do this with you. If you want something different, tell us what you want different and we can um, work around you. So please fill in the feedback form. Um, it really makes a difference when it comes to us saying, oh, we want to do some more of these. It gives us the power to persuade people to let us do it. So, Jacob, any last comments before we let uh, let people go and find, uh, find their biscuits? Uh, just a big thank you to everyone in the chat. I've had such a lovely evening chatting <laughs> to everyone, hearing about everyone's funny stories and how knowing it's not just me that has lots of Christmas food left over that we need to get through. Um, I really hope I can catch you all again soon at another Student Hub Live. And if there's anything we missed or you want to ask us, we're always at the end of an email, Student Hub. Oh, 
Look at that. <laughs> Jacob freezes at the end. <laughs> So don't worry, we'll put the email e address up on the screen for you. So don't worry about that. So if you want to get in touch, you can join us using the email address and um, come and join us at one of the sessions. We have a lot of time. Um, you'll, you'll come across Margaret and Isabella. Everybody's completely mad, but we're mad in different ways. So come along and visit us and we really look forward to seeing you. Thank you for your time tonight. Enjoy yourselves, and from the study shack in Leicestershire, good night. <laughs>